and welcome to Industry Insights with Cal. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on global garment supply chains. This stems from customers cancelling orders to delayed raw material shortages and sometimes the closure of manufacturing facilities. Regardless of this, the apparel manufacturing industry in Sri Lanka has made a significant recovery since then. And we have with us here today Mr. Dilanka Jinadasa, the group Chief Executive Officer of Hella Apparel Holdings to share with us his expertise and his experience in giving leadership to one of the leading apparel manufacturers in Sri Lanka. So thank you for having me. Um, so Hella is actually a Sri Lankan origin company. We've been in business for over 25 years, but it was really over the last five to six years that we really transformed the business by bringing in new talent, really focusing on our value propositions and with a clear focus around servicing our customers. Thank you for that introduction. So I think one thing we all noticed last year during the height of the pandemic was that certain customers started shifting their orders away from China, which uh, happens to be one of the largest manufacturing destinations in the world, towards alternative uh, destinations in the region. So uh, with the recent situation with countries like Vietnam, Sri Lanka and even Bangladesh reaching its peak in uh, the surge of new cases, are we seeing the same kind of trend with con customers shifting their orders towards alternative destinations at this given time? To be honest, the migration from China has been happening for a while. Uh, it got accelerated with the likes of the trade tensions between US and China and then of course with the pandemic a lot of the brands which were not looking at migrating was open to the idea. Whereas the situation across the countries that you mentioned is quite different. Uh, the thing about COVID is that it's very unpredictable. The, the next hotspot could be anywhere uh, and the hotspot today can, might not be the hotspot tomorrow. So by moving from country to country might not be the solution because of its unpredictable nature. So what we as a manufacturer did was really uh, widen our footprint through partnered capacity um, so that no matter which scenario plays out, we've got a solution that will help mitigate the situation. So what exactly are the lasting notable changes that occurred within the apparel manufacturing value stream because of COVID? And in your opinion, do you think it has changed the industry for the better or the worse? I think from a customer standpoint, they are looking at their supply chain strategy a lot more seriously. A lot of the customers were comfortable with the supplier base that they were working with for decades. And they might, that might have led them to be extremely exposed to one region or one country or even one vendor. So this has opened the opportunity where our customers are now looking at non-traditional markets or emerging markets like Africa. We have seen that boom where we've seen our top line in those markets grow 30 to 40 percent year on year. And a lot of it is a migration from the Far East uh, to these sort of regions. So I think now global brands will want to work with global players who's got a global footprint. That would be definitely a change. And then, like I said, digitization will play an extremely important part. So besides the obvious incentive of a very high quality end product, what are the other advantages that a customer has when sourcing from a country like Sri Lanka? Where Sri Lanka really competes uh, in, a, in a global scale is our technical capability and, and our appreciation of uh, things like innovation and design. And through that and by pretty much putting steroids into those uh, kind of services, we have become a global leader uh, in the apparel space with a population that doesn't really support mass manufacturing. I mean, if you look at Bangladesh or Vietnam or even a country like Ethiopia, they're all over 100 million plus uh, people and we've just got 20 million people. So when you look at our exports, uh, apparel exports, as a percentage of GDP per capita, we're actually higher than some of these other larger nations. And that's purely because of the value adding process that we follow in the apparel industry. So although the sub-Saharan African region represents less than 1% of global apparel exports, many domestic suppliers are in fact either considering shifting to that region or maybe they might have already shifted. So besides the uh, very obvious benefits such as the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which gives uh, duty-free access to the US markets when you're sourcing from Africa, are there any other attributes to that region which makes it an attractive sourcing destination? So, I mean, Africa is the final frontier when it comes to manufacturing and not just apparel manufacturing. And it's got the perception that if you go to Africa, it's a low and slow model. It's got long lead times. They don't have the capability to produce complex garments and we've completely challenged that. If you look at our factory uh, in Ethiopia, we've got 
over 1,500 operators right now and 3,000 uh, at full scale where we are producing the most complex bras. And these are again bras that were made in countries like Vietnam or Cambodia or even Sri Lanka uh, back in the day. So the fact that we are able to bring that sort of product complexity to a country or a region like Africa with added benefits of duty and sailing lead times, it's a value proposition that a lot of the brands can't ignore. So that concludes our session today uh, for Industry Insights with Cal. Thank you so much, Mr. Jinadasa, for taking the time to join us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Stay tuned for more Industry Insights in the coming weeks. Thank you.